Hello everyone and welcome to MIDI Waves by Ned Rush and Isotonic Studios. What is MIDI Waves? MIDI Waves is a Max for Live MIDI note generator that uses a variety of modulation sources in order to generate MIDI events. A single MIDI note is actually a list of various numbers and I've simply unpacked that list and given each item in that list its own LFO and then packed it back together in order to create a MIDI event. This can lead to some interesting melodic phrases and ideas that maybe would not come about using perhaps more traditional methods for MIDI note generation, such as MIDI effects or a MIDI keyboard. Because each item in the list has its own LFO, each of those LFOs can be offset from each other to create these unusual cascading events that kind of go in and out of phase and go off kilter with each other, but are still snapped to a musical scale so they can sound quite pleasing and can enable you to come up with very interesting, beautiful phrases or perhaps weird ones or scary ones or perhaps nothing at all. It's entirely up to you. So let's have a look at how MIDI Waves works and what we can do with it. To start with, let's turn it on and it will start oscillating immediately, completely independent of the transport. So let's have a look at the pitch tab. As I said, each element, pitch, velocity, duration and gate has its own LFO and indeed its own FM LFO. So currently this LFO is oscillating up and down the keyboard. You can see here, it's going up and down. And the range at which it oscillates between is predetermined by the slider. So if we just want to oscillate around this bit here, we just click and drag there like that. And we're oscillating around this bit. If we want to go up here, click and drag up here. If we want to do the whole keyboard, we just click and drag across the whole keyboard like that. So you'll notice that there are kind of two color schemes here. There's pink and there's blue. The pink LFO is indeed the actual LFO that's oscillating inside MIDI waves. The blue LFO is a capture of the phase of that LFO quantized to um, rhythmic measures, predetermined here by the snap. So currently, the LFO is being snapped at 16th notes. So if I was to change that to, say, 1N, which is a bar, you can hear how it gets snapped. If I increase the speed of the LFO, you can see how, if you look at the oscilloscope here, how it's being snapped at certain phases of that LFO. With fast snap rates, you can get these very interesting irregular melodic patterns. Let's go for a very slow rate. You can see how it's just going to cascade up and down. If we go for a fast rate, And of course, we have different LFO shapes. We've got sine, triangle, down, and up. And random.
We've also got a few other features for how the LFOs behave. Uh, we've got sync, which means that it's now synced to the transport. So when I start the transport in live, the LFO will start. When you enable sync, the frequency dial will become deactivated and the speed of the sync is determined by this drop-down menu here. So currently it's oscillating at 2N. If we go to 16N, it's going to oscillate at 16th notes. I'm going to set it back to free for now. Let's have a look at what the curve is doing. Uh, let's go to uh, triangle. The curve will apply a tiny little bit of a curve to the shape. Let's try it on down. You can see how we've got a little bit of a curve there. It's not a straight ramp down. It's actually got a bit of a curve. I quite like that. OK. Let's have a look at the FM section. So for each oscillator, there is an FM LFO, which you can route to the main LFO. So I'm going to try that now. I'm going to set my uh, pitch LFO to a pretty, pretty slow um, frequency here. And now I'm going to look at my um, pitch LFO here. I'm going to set this quite fast. I'm going to set this to go down and I'm going to dial that in. And you can see that I'm starting to modulate that pitch LFO to add a new shape. So we've got like a down ramp that's being added to our slowly going up and down triangle ramp, which can make for some interesting melodic phrases as well. having phrases that just go up and down they can go up and down and then down and back up a little bit and then back down and then up a little bit and then down and up and you know you get the idea um you can add like have a very 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 slow lfo and add like quite a fast little bit of random here let's increase the snap time You can see how we're getting these interesting shapes. They all get turned to MIDI notes. Okay, good stuff. Let's have a look at some of the other features. Velocity works in much the same way as the pitch, as does the duration and the gate. However, just a couple of things are different. So, for example, if you want to set the velocity range in which the oscillator oscillates between, you do that with this slider here. So currently I'm sort of roughly oscillating between, I don't know, 32 and say 100. So. We go for maybe slightly more aggressive. You can hear how the instrument has higher velocity when it gets to this stage and less velocity at this stage. If you want very gentle velocity, just set a little range down there like that. And of course, in much the same way, you can dial in some FM to get these interesting shapes. Duration works in much the same way as velocity. However, this is determining the actual note length of the MIDI note. So if I was to pull this range slider down to very low down here, get very short notes, very plucky. If I was to go with a range up here, we get longer notes. 
If we set full range, we can oscillate between short plucky notes and longer notes. This might be noticeable more on an instrument with fewer voices. So I'm going to change the polyphony on this electric to three voices. So already you can hear how the three separate LFOs for pitch, velocity and duration are creating this very offset sense of phrasing. There's a sense of repetition to it, but the feel kind of changes each time it goes round because they're all going at different frequencies. Let's have a look at the gate section now. This is a gate LFO and a gate FM LFO. This has got some interesting potential because we can modulate the speed of the gate. The gate is really um, a trigger. That's that's the final destination for the, the all the MIDI messages that have been packed into a single message to trigger the message. But you can do that um, on an LFO basis with a frequency of 0.1 which is basically nothing. Or we can go incredibly fast. But I think it really gets interesting when we start to add some FM to this. So I'm going to look at my gate FM LFO here. I'm going to pull the rate down very slowly. And I'm going to dial in some FM here and see what happens. So we're modulating the speed of the gate LFO. And of course we can do that in various ways. You can use random LFOs. We can apply some curve to that FM LFO. To get these very off kilter phrases. There we go. Let's go for a very short note duration. Kind of bouncing ball MIDI notes. Very nice. So we also have a sequencer for the gate. Um, this is probably best demonstrated when in sync mode. So I'm going to put the gate into sync mode, which is going at 16th notes. And I'm going to just increase the amount of steps here. We've got eight steps in our little step sequencer here.
You know, I can hear that it's sort of coming up with things that I might not might not necessarily think to do when I sit down at a keyboard. I find it just stimulates my imagination quite a bit, and I've had lots of fun just sitting here experimenting with it. And of course, it's, if it's doing something that I like, I can route that to a new MIDI channel. So I've got a second MIDI channel set up here. I can choose the track that MIDI Waves is on, set that to post effects, and record what it's doing. We can watch that in real time. Lovely stuff. So of course, because these are MIDI note messages, um, you don't necessarily have to use them for what they were intended. Um, you know, pitch, velocity and such can actually be applied to other things in most instruments. For example, velocity doesn't necessarily have to be used for the volume of something, it could be used for something else. So for example, I'm going to use wavetable here and I'm going to route the, um, the velocity uh, of the incoming MIDI note to say the position of the wavetable. So I'm going to set the position here to 50% and indeed the amount that I'm going to assign the velocity to that to about 50%. And then I can kind of use the velocity as a way to modulate around the wavetable position. Probably I might want to disable um, velocity to amplitude, so I'll just set that to zero. So let's have a little look at that. Let's turn on MIDI waves. We're jumping around the wavetable position. If I increase the velocity here, we can use the velocity to jump to different positions in the wavetable. So there you go, that's MIDI Waves by Ned Rush and Isotonic Studios, available in the link in the description. Hope you enjoy.